by a screw. <gasps> what? You've done the wrong one. Oh no. It was the first thing I said on the camera. <laughs> you have to laugh. <laughs> Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Tim, this is The Restoration Couple, and in today's video, Joe and I are gonna show you how we managed to get all of our handles fit to our doors and drawers in the kitchen. Nice and simple, stick around and I'll show you how we did it. So our kitchen consists of a bunch of tool units and then a whole load of drawers with just a few standard cupboards. So most of this is drawer handles and we're using the same sort of bar handles for both our drawers and our doors. So it's a similar jig, but it's got a few variations. So the kitchen's fallen behind a little bit because we've been concentrating on getting some second fix done and plumbing and all sorts. However, we could do with getting this done sooner rather than later. So we've got two types of handles. They are bar handles, both of them. Uh, so that's for drawers and cupboards. They are two different lengths, but very similar. So the wider ones are gonna be on these wide drawer units, which are 800 in width. So rather than measuring and drilling and getting things wrong, uh, we're gonna make up a little jig. So that's what I started on. But now I've got the camera, I can show you what it's all about. So we've got a piece of MDF here and I could do with it being a bit thicker to be honest, but it should be okay. Now, the centers on our two different size handles are, um, I think this one's 160 and the other one's a little bit wider. So all I've done is I've taken the piece of MDF, I've marked our center point here. I've also put two lines here, and if I shaded down here, majority of these shaker doors, this section here, which is actually four inches or about 110 or 112, uh, millimeters they're the same whether it's the doors or the drawers apart from this one top drawer which is deeper so I'll come back to that and we'll do these ones last so we don't mess up and transfer things wrong but you can see I've made this piece of MDF the same height as our rail here on the shaker door and the same it'll match up that way then I've put a line on here which is exactly halfway between the top and the bottom of that rail so if we now, our centered marks are there, if we drill these two holes, we'll have a perfectly made up jig. All we'll then need to do is just measure on top of the, we'll open the jaw, measure to the middle, match it up and drill through. Right, so they're drilled. I'm just gonna double check it all before we start drilling loads of expensive carbonates. So they're 160. And then just to double check, so we can't make any mistake, the holes. Yeah, so it's bang on. Bang on. How did I not get a single nail blow through the side of that? I haven't made this little T overhang there all the way. So that way, if we put a mark on the top of here, we can still line it up. I think about it, I could have made the same jig to work on jaws and doors, because if I'd made the jig slightly higher, I could have, do you know what I mean? Stopped it at the top there. Well, I, I tell you it's what, dr drilling through the plastic is definitely the answer. Look at them, they are neat. Swish I mean, the other side. <gasps> What? You've done the wrong one. Oh no. It was the first thing I said on the camera. <laughs> you have to laugh. Your snorting is not helping. This is, this is nervous laughter. <laughs> no, that should no. fit. But they're the short handles. So they're short, they're short. They look yeah. huge. Yeah. 
The sensors are different. Oh, dear. So, if you hadn't really got what that... What have we learned? What have we, we learned? learned? Listen to what I actually said, because I'm pretty sure in the first clip I said, we're not actually going to draw the jaw drill the jaws, yeah. Anyway. But also, don't, don't start, start with right the most proper proper one, one. Which I think I also said on the camera. <laughs> yeah, so for, for reference, this is what we were aiming for this width. So we'll just use these and the utilities, these six. That looks really good. Feels solid as well. <laughs> one job You've never let us. me do this before. You never give me the responsibility of sharpening your pencil, so it takes time, you know? It's been a while since I've been out of the classroom. I was, wasn't withholding that. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, so what is that? 39.9. Oh, no, it's not. Oh! <sighs> I'm so glad I questioned you. <laughs> that did me. I, I saw it was near 38, but I thought you might have moved to take my jig. Oh dear. <laughs> I should have made a full width jig just for that. <laughs> Good girl, Rosa! Now, we're going to screw these. Oh, good girl. So we're just working out the height of the handles on this top drawer because the top drawer is quite a lot deeper. However, the cupboards either side are the normal shaker style. Therefore, if we put that one in the centre of this drawer, it's going to be a different height from the cupboard next to it. So I think what we're going to do is install using the same jig. So they will just be, I don't know, just above halfway on here. Are we sure about that? I think so. I think, we, I think when we stand back, we're going to want them to line up, aren't we? Look a bit weird if it goes up, down, Yeah, I down, guess normally up. you'd have a handle on a cupboard so you wouldn't yeah. have this issue. Do you think that's... Unless we put a handle here or... You, because well, it's a bin, we want to... I think it is. All right, getting somewhere now. I've modified the jig once again. Uh, rather than having a positive stop, so when we're working from the top, rather than it kind of slotting and topping out there, I've just put a mark on, and as long as I met, line up that mark with the edge of our rail, it works fine. Back on it. Uh, you've been doing this? Yeah. You've I've been, been rescuing goats. Saving yeah. goats. <laughs> Only six, but we'll talk about that another time. That's a DIY farm episode, yeah. the ins and outs of the dairy industry. Anyway, we are on to drawers now. You've done that one. Yeah. And you've got the jig, so I'm going to leave you. You measured up? Ooh. I don't know, I'll do that. <laughs>
So hopefully you got the hang of everything that was going on there. This is that simple jig we made and it worked really well. This worked for both the deep jaws but also for all of the shaker styles and, and rails so it should work on most things. Now we had two different lengths of handles as you saw and we had that initial boo-boo of drilling for a short handle on the wide jaws which was a little bit annoying but of course we've got a lot of other places and the utility where we can swap and change. So we've actually done short handles, I mean, tiny bit shorter on these drawers. My biggest takeaway from the whole thing is, is use some masking tape. The masking tape just covers up the holes you're not intending to use on that drawer. I know it sounds simple, I know, now it's, I know it sounds stupid, but as much as the labeling and stuff you can do, you're still potentially gonna get it wrong like I did. So cover up the holes you don't want, drill, then move the bits of tape as and when you move to a different configuration of cupboard or drawer. Now I am a bit of a self-confessed Craig fanboy and I've got most of their jigs for drilling door hinges, for putting in drawer slides, for putting pegs in for shelves. I don't own their hardware jig and their hardware jig I think does this sort of thing for you. You can preset your centers and do it that way. But knowing the amount of hardware that changes and the variations and varieties that there are, I would suggest that a little bit of MDF is just all you need. And the most simple method of all, which I haven't done today, but I've done well, for all of our Camperman um, hardware, is just get some wide masking tape and you can just simply make up a jig that you tape onto the door and then mark on your sensors and then you can kind of drill one door, peel it off, move it to the other one. Of course, you need to measure where the first hole is, but at least it will give you the set sensors for those two holes. I'm really pleased with how they came out. Still not certain if we should have gone for a different style on the cupboards, but I kind of like those actually. Um, and I'm gonna leave you with a bit of a question because I kind of need your advice here. We've gone for, well, as you see it, inbuilt oven, larder unit. The fridge freezer is an American fridge freezer, extra deep, so it protrudes slightly, simply because of the depth of these doors, which is fine, we were expecting that. This cupboard above, it needs to be set a little bit higher so it's level with the top, and then that top cornice will come all the way around. Uh, but the problem I've got is this is a 900 top box. Samsung make their fridges about 910, which doesn't help. Uh, so I need to probably look at putting an 18 mil sort of panel on the end top of that section. And then once I've built our pillar, well, kind of clad this, um, end stud wall here then I'll have to do another 18 mil piece there and then hopefully that would mean that the aperture still allows the fridge to slide in. I don't know otherwise how you do it maybe it's just to do with end panels but it's odd that they don't oversize the 900 top box to allow for a 900 or 910 fridge freezer. I'm sure some of you might have done a kitchen install recently or you might even be a kitchen fitter so let me know what normally happens there. If you haven't seen our recent videos, we've done some videos on getting the door linings fitted. We're also busy getting the second fix done, architrave, skirting boards, Joe's been doing all that today. Hopefully we're gonna be ready to paint that tomorrow. And of course, all the worktops to go in. They're sat up in the barn, ready to finish. Uh, we're gonna get some, uh, well, seal the underside first, then bring them down. We're then gonna hopefully get them cut and put in place because then we can get the sink in. That means we can run the taps, wash our hands, make a cup of tea. We don't need to be hanging around with the pigs at the barn doing that. So uh, we'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.